I have confidence in you. Jesus, Lord, I have confidence in you. You are my Savior, Lord, I have confidence in you. Anytime, anywhere. Oh, 
On the mountain top, I will serve you, Lord, for your faithfulness, hallelujah. I'm gonna serve you, Lord, for your faithfulness, hallelujah. I'm gonna serve, I'm gonna serve my Lord. On the mountain top, I will serve my Lord for His faithfulness. Hallelujah! I'm gonna serve my Lord for His faithfulness. Hallelujah! I'm gonna serve the Lord. I say, Great is the Lord. He is greatly to be praised in the city of the Lord, in the mountain of his holiness. He is beautiful for situations, the joy of the whole world. Is Mount Zion the sides of the north, the city of the great king? Is Mount Zion the sides of the north, the city of the great 
serve you, you Lord. I will serve you With every bit of me I will serve you Every breath I draw I will serve you Every day of my life I will serve you With every strength in me I will serve you Every second of my life I will serve you Oh my Lord I will serve you only I say I will serve you Lord I will serve you Lord I will serve you Master Every breath in me I will serve you Lord I will serve you Father I will serve you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. All glory, glory, glory to my Lord. All glory, 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 glory to my Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Hosanna, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hosanna, 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 blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah.
inhabits the praises of Israel has come. Talk to him now. Your miracle is a prayer away. He is here. 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 The miracle worker has come. The miracle worker has come. The miracle worker is here. You are here. You are here. You are standing by your side. Just to bring your words to pass. You are here. So come and do your miracles, your miracles for us. Come and do your miracles, your miracles for us. Situation changer. Destiny rewriter, come rewrite my destiny, my destiny for me. Come and change our histories, our histories for us. Destiny changer. Wonderful way maker, come and do your miracles, your miracles for us. Come and do your miracles, your miracles for us. Your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. You are the miracle working. Your name is Yahweh. My Lord, your name is Yahweh.
Hallelujah. Please be seated in the Holy Spirit. Praise Him. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you all in Jesus' mighty name. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor. If you don't know it, August visitor is around. Special visitor is around. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. His visitation will change your life will change your story will change your destiny be in the spirit key in and watch what he will do in your life in Jesus mighty name last Sunday the Lord visited us in this same way amen and today again he has done it something is happening in the house I started the teaching part one on undercover last Sunday. And I took my text from Psalms 91. Is that not so? Psalms 91 verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The dweller, not the visitor. The dweller, not the visitor. I will say, declare, proclaim of the Lord. So your pronunciation. Please, I am teaching. Don't think I am just reviewing. I will be saying things I didn't say last week. So your declaration and your proclamation is very important. If you for this service, be seated, please. I will say, I will declare, I will open my mouth and say my, declare my expectations. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress in him will i my god in him will i trust in other words i'll declare my confidence and my covering and i'll keep prophesying it into manifestation verse 3 surely without a doubt surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler in other words, the traps that the enemy set unawares for you will not catch you. Amen? Amen. And from the noisome pestilence, sicknesses, diseases, infirmities that people noise about, fear and worry about, you are covered from them because you are under cover. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. The covering of his feathers like the mother hen covers the chicks you will be covered by the feathers of the almighty under his wings shall thou trust his truth shall be thy shield and buckler i remember pastor Debo, you told a story of three little fishes in the ocean and this shark targeted them and they soon discovered that they were appointed to be meals for him he wanted to eat them. So to protect themselves, one went and hired an octopus. The other one went and hired a school of barracuda, which are dangerous fishes by themselves, to defend him and bodyguard him. The third one prayed to God and said, Be a covering over me, because I have no help except from you. Praise the Lord. So the first one, went out and the shark came after him and saw the bodyguard octopus and faced the octopus first devoured the octopus ate that one then went after the fish and that one was small fry that one was snack to buttress the main meal amen so fish number one died fish number two the same shark targeted him and the school of Barracuda surrounded him. So what he did was he targeted the Barracuda one after the other. And when he had eaten up the Barracuda, he ate up the small fish. So the protection of even vicious Barracuda could not protect the little fish from that shark. Then the third one went out. Nobody could see any bodyguard around him, any protection around him. But they noticed that the shark was keeping his distance. Anytime he appears, the shark reacts and begins to come close to him. 
But then he comes to a certain distance and they notice he's afraid. He doesn't come too near him. So when days passed and this little fish was moving around freely, nothing happened to him. Other fishes in the water called the shark and said, Oga shark, you ate the first fish with his octopus by the very guard. You ate the second fish with his barracuda convoy and you still took all of them out. But we notice you seem to be afraid of this fish that doesn't even have a bodyguard. What's happening? What is it that is scaring you? Said fish, there's no fish in the water that I'm afraid of. But haven't you noticed, is there anything, are you people blind? Haven't you noticed the shadow that covers this little fish? Everywhere he goes, the shadow goes with him. Everywhere he goes, the shadow goes with him. Every time I come towards him, I look up to see what is casting that shadow. And I don't see anything. I don't know what it is that is casting the shadow. But whatever it is that, that is casting a shadow over this fish, as big as the shadow is, I don't want to meddle with the fish. I have not seen what is casting the shadow. But I'm afraid that if I come too near the fish, what is casting the shadow will manifest. And it will manifest against me. I don't know what it is. And I don't want trouble that I don't understand. So, until I understand what is covering this fish, let me just be watching him. And of course, there is no way you will ever know who the Lord is in full. In this side, on this side of heaven. Am I talking to somebody here? So, any enemy that chases after you when you abide, verse 4, he shall cover thee with his feather. Under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. A shield to ward off any attack of the enemy. A buckler to give you confidence around a belt. That a man who has a loose belt is not confident in a fight. He knows that anything can happen and he will be fighting with his trousers first before he fights with his enemy. And he is in double jeopardy. But when God is both shield and buckler to you, you are in a very safe place. May we learn to be under his cover. The cover of his feathers, the cover of his wings in Jesus' name. Five, thou shalt not be afraid therefore for the terror by night, whatever time the enemy comes, nor the arrow that flieth by day. I was talking with a man of God a few days ago. And he told me certain things and he said that there was a time when five armed robbers came to his house, broke down the door, came in and five of them were armed and pointed guns at his head. He closed his eyes and said, Father, into your hands I commit my soul. And there was no shot. But he started hearing sound and voices raised in anger. He opened his eyes Five armed robbers, I don't know whether they were quarreling over who will shoot, started slapping themselves one after the other. With the right hand, you're holding gun. Left hand, you're slapping the other man. And the other man retaliates. God set ambushments in their ranks. Five of them finished slapping themselves foolish and left the house without taking a pin and without touching the man. May that be the covering of God's glory over you. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flieth by day. Why? Because you're under the covering of God. Six, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. So whatever the hour of the day the enemy comes, and whatever the description of the enemy, whether it be pestilence, whether it be destruction, whether it be terror, whether it be arrows, whatever they are, God says I'm beautiful for situations. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. Take note of that word, habitation. Because you've made him your habitation. Verse 8 says, 
you will see what happens to others. Now, know this. If a thousand are falling by your side, you'll be afraid. We're not talking about the absence of fear. We're not talking about the absence of concern. We're talking about a faith and confidence that somehow your case is different. A thousand fall by your side. What killed them? You don't know, but they're dead. And you're still there. Then it jumps from your left hand side to your right hand side and kills 10,000. The same thing, but it has avoided you. May that be your portion and be the portion of all that concerns you because you are under the cover of the Lord. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Only with your eyes. So what happens to others will avoid you. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is thy refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Why? Because he's your covering. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, and the young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, Therefore will I deliver him. God says, because you have set your love upon him. So where is your love? Very, very important. You can claim covering, but where your love is betrays the truth. It could be on mammon, money. It could be on somebody, an individual. If you love anything more than you love God, you have to go and go take your covering from that person. Am I communicating? God says, I won't share my glory with anybody. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he had known my name. There's this thing about being undercover with God. And I give you this assurance. David said, I have been young, but now I am old. And I have watched year by year of my life. First decade, 10 years passed, I was still observing. 20 years passed, I was still observing. 30 years passed. But now that I am almost 70, I can testify and say, I have never seen the righteous forsaken. This is observation, proof, evidence. I, I've watched for donkey years and I can now say it. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. I can tell you this, of a truth before everyone here without fear or favor you cannot walk with God in spirit and in truth undercover and your latter days shall be fa filled with failure and pain and frustration and no it doesn't work it doesn't happen that way there's something about God that keeps improving you gradually the Bible says we look into the mirror where we see his image, his word. And we keep looking. Something begins to happen. Day by day, from glory to glory, we begin to change. We will not know that we are changing. But suddenly, if somebody had been keeping record of your past, he begins to say, oh boy, things are getting better for you. And I want to say this. I have seen it. I have proven it. It is the truth. There are many who come to church, but they don't abide under his shadow. They are visitors to his shadow. There are many who come to church, they don't love him. And he says, if you love me, obey my commandment. Don't stop, stop making noise. I love you, I love you, I love you. That's talk, and talk is cheap. Love is first and foremost demonstrated by obedience. And you cannot stay under God's cover without total obedience. With Jehovah, partial obedience is non-obedience. Please, are you hearing me? You don't obey when you like. Nor do you obey the instructions you like. You obey him in totality. One disobedience with God makes you a disobedient person. Am I communicating? 
There are some people who have determined and decided the limit of my obedience and submission to God is in this, in this, in this. But Father, when it concerns my money, don't call my name. It is my money, not your money given to me to look after. If you have that perspective, you will be out of order continually, financially. And the truth of the matter is, you don't understand the dimensions of how much out of order you are. Except you understand that the Bible says, no man can serve two masters. You will either love one and hate the other, or you will love one and absolutely abhor the other. And I'm talking about God and mammon. So anybody who, who cannot put his finances under divine subjection and obedience to the commandments of God, whether you like it or not, the truth of the matter is that the person you worship as a Christian, the person you've made number one as a Christian is not God. You've told him how do everything else I should do but in the area of money no there must be and you can't be perfect overnight for the man who is trying and failing and asking God help me there's more hope for him because he's genuinely trying to get better and better and he will arrive but the person who has made up his mind in this area of my life whatever that area be Lord, keep off. Your Lord over some, not Lord over all. God says, I will not be Lord at all with that person. Praise the living God. So because he has set his love upon me, is totally and fully yielded to me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will deliver him as a blank check. Whatever comes his way, I will be there for him. His case will be different. Where others go and fail. Listen, a man of God said, if you find yourself challenged in certain areas of your life where you feel you should not be challenged, check your obedience in other areas of your life. It is possible that your disobedience in one, two or more areas of your life is giving Satan the broken hedge manifestation. He requires to attack you somewhere else. Am I communicating with somebody here? When I was in Power Arena, I remember a time when I was talking with a friend of mine, Sonny, and I said, Sonny, I am begging God for more of the miraculous in my life, in my ministrations and all that. And he said to me, Pastor Obi, in fact, there was a lot of problems coming at me at that time. And I said, Sonny, look, I... They're fighting against me. I don't know what for. Well, let God make me in such a way that if I open my eyes and look at you, anointing will carry you and throw you away. Amen? When I look at you and you have leprosy, just because I looked at you, God will heal you. That if they're now jealous about that one, I'll know what they're jealous about now. Is it these one or two small things that sometimes happen once, or once in a while? And he laughed at me. I said, Pastor Biwan, you don't know what's going on in this congregation. You are a pastor, but you don't know what God is doing here. He said, what do you mean? He said, you haven't noticed that people come into this church wretched. They don't give a testimony that they got Rolls Royce tomorrow. They don't give testimony that they got contract of million. But watch their lives six months after that. They're dressing better, looking better. They have their own apartments. Gradually things are working out for them. You don't realize that God is raising them up gradually. And it's because of the teachings and the word and the anointing and the sincerity. Gradually, everybody is being built up that believes in spirit and in truth. And I began to watch after he said it. And I saw it. Please, can I say this to somebody under the sound of, the voice, of my voice? I was on my way back from Enugu yesterday. And I know exactly where I was. I was approaching the stadium in the taxi that was carrying me. When I got a phone call, in fact, I was opposite the police barracks coming towards the stadium. When the phone call came, and I was very, very, very tired. So I took the phone call exhausted and tired. And the young man said, my name is 
I, I slot the number. It would be something I can't remember exactly. And I couldn't fathom the name. So I said, yes, sir. So can, how can I help? He said, I'm one of your sons. I said, all these sons, sons, sons. And so, okay, sir, you're one of my sons. Can I help you, sir? He said, I remember that God used you in those days to do for me. I said, oh, I said, is this 419 or is this? He said, Pastor Obi, do you remember the message you taught on God of 24 hours miracle? Now, when he mentioned that, I knew that was a teaching I had done. So I said, yes, I remember that teaching. And he said, man of God, that teaching changed my life. That was when I had my visitation from God. At that time, my wife was pregnant and we were about to go and abort the pregnancy. Because we didn't have any money. But you made that teaching, said certain things, and I called my wife. I said, we will not, ab we will not abort this child. He said, man of God, I want to tell you today that that child that we did not abort that day has just passed jam to enter into university. Look, eh? my tiredness disappeared. The joy that came into me, my tiredness, the ch a child I have never seen, I can, she can be here now, I wouldn't know her from Adam. But that God used me to save her life and now she's about to enter university. I was overjoyed. I started giving glory to God. And he went on talking and talking and saying, Pastor, one day I will bring her to church, we'll come to church and we'll testify that I don't know how to give the testimony that I was looking at myself, my own child is entering university and this is a child I nearly aborted some years ago. But for the message that I heard you preaching. And you know suddenly, I said, Father, it doesn't matter the strain and the stress. If this one child is the only reward, it is a good enough reward. I am happy that I preached a message that saved the life of this child. Whoever the child is, I don't know who she is. Praise the name of the Lord. So once in a while, you sit under men of God. Let me tell you the truth. From people I have taught, people close to me. There's rarely ever a time anybody comes to me, except maybe Lawrence once in a while, and says, Pastor, that message today was for me. That message touched my life. I tell you the truth. You don't know how much it edifies. You don't know how much it gives strength. I sat down as soon as I came back from Enugu, had a number of things to do to get ready for Mrs. Oruna's uh, service of songs on Tuesday. I finally got home around about 8 p.m. I tried to sleep. Sleep wouldn't come. I sat in the study from that time till 4 a.m. to get ready for today's ministration. From that time till 4 a.m. I was sitting in the chair. Got up by 4 a.m., went and took my bath and came here. Now, that kind of sacrifice is so that I'll have something to say that I feel is from the Lord. Something that will touch somebody's life. You don't know how much it encourages me. That's why anybody who has gone for outreach with me, know, you know that I'm a different person on the ministration ground than here. Because the moment I'm coming down, the guest minister is saying, man of God, God spoke through you. His wife is saying, man of God, the message was for me. Somebody else is saying, man of God, I'm so glad you came. Ma I will hear it up to 10 times before I enter the car to be taken home. Of course, when I get home, there is new zeal. There's new excitement. But here I come and I look at the same faces. And they're not smiling. It's as if they're looking at me saying, what will he say this week that he didn't say last week? I'm telling you the truth. And it drains, it drains you. It drains you. It drains you. It takes, it takes a life out of you. That's part of why pastors die young. Because truthfully speaking, there's little encouragement. But every time I go out for an outreach, I'm encouraged back to back reinforced back to back people saying that they gained something then any sacrifice you might have made becomes useful becomes meaningful becomes exciting and you have the desire to make that sacrifice again 
It's not that men's praise is the main thing, but it also helps. Praise the Lord. So even the almighty God himself says in Psalms 91, because he had set his love upon me, because he has placed a demand upon me, therefore will I deliver him. There's a reason for it. He looks up to me. I wouldn't disappoint him. His expectation is on me. I wouldn't disappoint him. He places a demand on me. He will pull something out of me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high. Gradually he will find himself rising. Because he had known my name. Knowing my name is not just he calls me Jehovah. He knows what Jehovah means. He knows what El Gibor means. So he knows me in various aspects of who I am. Now nobody can know me in totality. But he's making an effort to know my nature, know my character, know my capacities, have an expectation of me. And all of these things contribute to his placing a demand upon me. And you can't come to know God without some things about you changing. You can't come to know God and you walk into church anytime you like. I tell you, most of you don't know God and you don't want to know him. That's the truth. Can I be blunt? You don't know him and you don't want to know him. Because if you know, if you know who he is, you will know that yes, he's a loving father, but he's also the consuming fire. Your fear of him is gone. He's your classmate. So after you've read WhatsApp this morning, chatted with all your friends this morning, you lackadaisically put on your dress and start coming to church to fulfill your own righteousness because it's not all righteousness there's no righteousness you're fulfilling there it's your own self yourself you want to satisfy if you were coming here with the fear of the lord you'd be here in time i know what i see in places where i minister anglican church on which i never forget it 5 a.m i had a morning ministration and an evening ministration by 5 a.m. as the bell was tolling for service to start, the people who were late, who were already at the gate, started running. They were already at the gate. Too. They started running. So that before the bell stops ringing, they'll enter the church. You never see that in Pentecostal churches. We are too, too familiar with God. And that's why they call us rascals. Pente rascals. We, he has become our classmate. Nobody, nobody, is, nobody panics when it is getting late to go to church. What you will not dare to do in your office, you do it with the worship of the Almighty God. Service will be going on. People will be chatting at the back, chewing, chewing gum and greeting one another. Oh, time that you came to greet God. The most important thing to you is greeting one another. Something is wrong. Something is absolutely wrong. And he says, because he has set his love upon me, it colors certain actions he takes. The love of God in him constrains him to behave in a certain way. He doesn't take certain liberties. He doesn't take me for granted. He responds to me, respects and honors me. As a result, I will set him on high. It's a promise. He will be lifted up. He will be established. I will deliver him whenever he's in trouble. Because he has known my name. Verse 15. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him when he's in trouble. I'll be there. I will deliver him and I'll honor him. Everybody else will get into trouble, but I'll be with one person. All of them got into trouble, but I'll be with him in particular. I am still looking for it, but I know I read it in a version of the Bible. I don't remember which one it was, many years ago. And it said, a genuine, heartfelt, serving Christian is never visited with actual evil. And that's a big statement. Some things might happen to him that appear to be evil. But by the time one or two months pass, one or two years pass, you look back at what happened to him and what has resulted from it. You say, my God, 
Look at how God used what looked like evil to change his life, change his story. Bless him indeed. So it looked bad at that time, but God used it to work out a great weight of good in his life. Paul said that the light afflictions I'm going through today, they are light. Watch and see the kind of exceeding weight of great good that these same things will provoke in my life in the years to come. The chastisement of God today that you look down upon. The discipline of God today that you step aside from. No, be me, you can't do it. Undercover talks of under authority. Nobody likes authority nowadays. We are basically a rebellious people. And as I'm talking to every one of you, I'm talking to myself. We find it difficult to submit to authority. How old is he after all? When did he go to university? I graduated before him. That's why intelligent and brilliant and learned people are some of the most difficult people to get to understand kingdom. Please hear me. This is not a democracy. The church is not what? The church is not negotiated. You know, you lobby me and then after you have lobbied me, we'll see if we'll work together. No. The church is a theocracy. And the person set, in, uh, set at the top by God <laughs> pray for him bro. pray for him because if he makes a mistake he can put you in trouble David's mistake when he numbered Israel brought about the death of 70,000 Israelites God in his anger killed 70,000 people were those people there when David made the mistake if they had been praying for David he might not have made the mistake one of your biggest prayer assignments is to pray for the man of God set over you. That he will execute righteous judgments. That will make God pour blessings upon his church. And when the church is blessed, oh my, you will be happy you are in the church. Because when it comes down, it will come down upon your life, come down on your child. I got a phone call from the U.S., Somebody that I pastored and mentored some years ago who is now a minister in the U.S. called me and said, Pastor, look at the situation I'm going through. And this woman wants to leave the church where we are being pastored by a certain man of God. And these are her reasons. I looked at the reasons she gave and I said, number one, she has responsibility in the church. True or false? True. Number two, in this church, you say that her child went through certain problems and God delivered the child, yes. Her husband went through certain problems and God stepped in and delivered. I can tell you without a doubt, the covering of that man of God is over her and her family. And now, for some spurious reason, she wants to draw back. I can tell you what is going to happen to her in the next five to ten years. And she said, Pastor, what will happen? She said, watch her family, watch her children, watch her husband. You'll see backsliding. You'll see drawing back. You'll see scattering, entering into that family. Why? Because the covering over them has been removed. She disdained the covering that God put over them. And not being undercover, it will not happen overnight. And please, I speak to you under the sound of my voice. If you know where God has planted you, make sure you belong there. And when I say belong, not that you come for Sunday, Sunday services. Be active. Serve God in spirit and in truth. As your children are growing and becoming mature, some of them might worship in other churches. Fine. But if they want to stay connected with the altar, keep them linked with the altar. They need to be able to lift up their voice to God and say, Father, remember I am still connected to this altar. Let the umbrella over this altar cover me. Let the umbrella over the man of God, the mantle over him, cover me. I am under cover. I am under cover. Like you say, I am your son. You might have been my son 10 years ago. You're not my son anymore. If I don't see you, I don't hear from you, I don't minister to you, 
You don't minister to me or minister to the altar where I serve. You cannot claim to be my son. There are many of you here. You have one leg in Israel and one leg in Egypt. Hello, somebody. You have one leg in Israel. You have one leg in Egypt. And God does not know under whose cover you are. Even God does not know. You yourself have no idea who's covering you under. Where is your heart? The Bible says that's where your treasurer will be. Where is your family? Where is your hope? Where is it that you know you can pick up the phone and phone and call? And somebody responds to you because they know you. They have pastored you. They see you as sheep that they look after. Praise the Lord. You know, some of these orthodox churches have something that we don't have. If you're a member of Anglican Church or Roman Catholic Church, and please, I don't say this as a mark of any kind of disrespect. No. They understand the principle where your treasure is, your heart will be there. Sunday offering is yours. You decide what to give. Tithe is based on your income. If God blesses you, you give it 10% of it. Is that not so? But if you're a member of the church, number one, there are certain classes you'll attend. Number two, you must belong to one or two groups in the church. Number three, there are dues you must pay. There are what? Dues you must pay either every week or every month. Abi, Daddy, Anglican Church, you're a strong member. Is that true? Huh? When my mother, or class, they call it good. When my mother passed on, I couldn't allow anybody. My children were so touched by the loss of their grandmom. They put it on Facebook. While I was on the way to village, and I was on the way, somebody called me. I said, is it true that your mother died? I said, how did you know? I said, Facebook. I called my children immediately and said, anything you put up on Facebook, face it down. Bring it down now, now, now. Why? Because in the village, I have not settled with them. Let me go and find out if she's owing, settle all her account, or else they can very easily say, and correctly too, we are not going to do anything about this. This is not our person. But Pentecostal, we just walk in and walk out, walk in and walk out. The day we like, we walk in. The day we like, we walk out. Then any day that you cry, you expect us to cry with you. Why? Any day that you're rejoicing, you expect us to rejoice with you. Why? Am I communicating with anybody here? Are you, are you really one of us? You know, Mr. Runa has just gone to be with the Lord. You have no idea how much we've gone through to make sure that service of songs on Tuesday. If you're a member of this congregation, I beg you, don't care how important your business is. Let us honor Mrs. Oruno on Tuesday. Since this commission opened, and even before we named this commission, Mrs. Oruno was praying, going to camp, praying, fasting, for the foundations to be set, for God to even tell us what is the opening date. Am I communicating with anybody here? And she passed on. Now, let me tell you the truth. And I had a meeting with the deacon board and the leadership. The family said that this church is too small. For the kind of big men they're expecting to come. In fact, that some of them who are speakers of various houses said that they can't come here to Agoda, to a church for the mother's burial ceremony or wake keeping. We looked at it and it almost became a case of are we going to struggle with the family over where their mother should be buried? And you don't do that. You don't fight with their family over the body of the mother. But luckily, as we were discussing it, there was so much passion, so much anger. Everybody was unhappy. One member of the deacon board, I think it was deacon Peter Sai said, Daddy, we must do something. Can we do a wake, a service of songs for her here? Yeah? I said, yes, we will. We will do that. There must be something we must do to honor this woman who served here all her life. We know that we cannot compete or contend with members of our family who have decided they took 
the service of songs for Mr. Runo to a church in Victoria Island and the burial service to the church in Victoria Island because we're too small if you know how to pray go and talk to God God they're beginning to say we are too small so do something about it oh God give us that larger place we've been praying for for so long praise the Lord but we were not too small to watch over Mitchell Zeruna's soul for how many years? 18? 18 years. I have been pastoring her, watching over her soul. Nobody knows how many times Mrs. Zeruna was at the gates of death. Even during lockdown. And they called me, Pastor Obi, mom is not eating anymore. Mommy said she will not eat again. Mommy said that she's tired, that she wants to go. There was a time when it was total lockdown. Nobody was going anywhere. They called me. That mommy is no longer eating. Refuses to do anything. I spoke with her over a long time. She said, she told me. and said, Pastor Obi, I have finished my own work. I am going home. I want to rest. Then suddenly the Lord gave me a word. That is a word that no other pastor can give her because you didn't pastor her. And what was the word? I said to Mrs. Oruno, do you remember we have a covenant of long life and godly order in death? She said, yes. I said, how many years did we agree with God our days would be? She said, five score and twenty. I said, by whose permission did you reduce your own? Did you tell me or ask me for permission to reduce your own? Suddenly, Mr. Aruna said, I didn't think about it like that. I am sorry. I said, Mrs. Aruna, tell me, I'm your pastor. By whose permission did you reduce your own? And the woman that had refused to eat from that, she was already coming close to the gate of death. She picked up and revived and survived more than another one year plus. Am I talking to somebody here? Unfortunately, when she died, I don't know that anything could, because I could have said anything I want to say. And God says, now is the best time for her to come home. Leave her. She has finished her assignment. She will go home because God's decision is final. Am I talking to somebody here? But this time she passed on, they called me and said, Mommy, we don't, know, we don't know what's happening. She wasn't feeling well. We took her to the hospital. I don't know what's going on. She was already dead when they were calling me. She was already gone when they were calling me. Now, am I saying that had they called me earlier, she would not have died? No, I'm not saying it. But I'm saying that there was at least one occasion when she was at the gates of death and God gave me a word to speak to her that no other pastor would have known to speak to her because no other pastor pastored her. No other pastor knows what we and she and God agreed on. Am I talking to somebody here? That's being undercover. By age, she's older than me. But I pointed out to her, as the covering of God over her, I said, no, this is not right. By whose permission? Did I give you permission to change what we said? She said, no. I said, then you can't go. You can't go. I, re I reject it. I refuse it. I said, daddy, I'm sorry. I said, come back. We are relocating to a new office. That was just before we packed here. We are relocating to a new office and your work is waiting for you. Hurry up and come back. I said, yes, daddy. I'll come. And she recovered. You know when we packed in here. And she recovered. Praise the living God. Please hear me. This matter of being undercover is no joke. If you play with it, a covering in the sight of God is like an umbrella. And there are at least seven types of umbrella kind of covering mentioned in the Bible. Praise the Lord. And every one of us knows what an umbrella is for. Basically, protection from rain. A covert. Is that not so? But sometimes we also use it to protect from sunshine. And from the elements and from other things. Praise the Lord. So that's Psalms 91, 15. To round up quickly and go back to the umbrella thing. He shall call unto me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. 
with long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. But the question is, are you under cover? All these blessings of promotion, prosperity, deliverance, strength, being able to tread on lions and adders and doing dangerous things, a thousand falling by your left, ten thousand by your right, etc., etc., are predicated on what? Are you under cover? And you can claim that you are, but you're not. Praise the living God. In Isaiah 11, and still coming to the umbrella thing, Isaiah 11 verses 1 and 2, and there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and the branch shall grow out of his roots too. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom, understanding, spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. In the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes. Neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. It is in the fear of the Lord. And I've been talking about being undercover. If you say I question spiritual authority. I accept the one I accept. The one I like will be my authority. If you know where you are planted. You'd better be planted there. And submit yourself to spiritual authority because God does not joke with authority and in the kingdom, it is a kingdom. He is head over his kingdom. It is not a democracy. You submit yourself to the rules and to the word of God and to the authority figure God has set over you. And I tell you this, if you are genuinely and properly in submission and you know the word of God, there are places where God says, if he tells you to disobey what the word of God, you don't have to obey that. He's not supposed to lead you contrary to God's word. Am I talking to somebody here? But other than that, he gives you an instruction. And it doesn't make sense, but you accept it. Because he's your leader. God is under obligation to watch over his words, over your life, because you are undercover. I don't know how to explain it except to say, when I was in Zoe, I remember not once, not twice. Sometimes with Pastor Amuzea. Sometimes with my then pastor, I spent some time in training under Pastor Amuzea. I remember a night, all night, we'd had a vigil. No rest. It was about 12 midnight that Pastor Ma woke me up, or called me, sorry, as we were about to go into prayers and said, Immediately after the prayers in the morning, you will drive me to Enugu. I'm ministering in Enugu this evening. I said, but I would be finishing night vigil. I wouldn't have slept. How can I drive to Enugu? He said, you will drive. Don't worry. We finished night vigil around 5.30. Took our baths. He laid hands on me and prayed you will not sleep. He entered the back and was sleeping. And I drove to Enugu non-stop. Sleep didn't touch my eyes. And it's not the first time it happened. Am I talking to somebody here? I know it happened with Pastor Amos at least on one occasion, probably if I remember correctly. So I saw even the laws of nature broken. I'm not saying every day you do things like that. But the need arose. And I had faith that somebody in spiritual authority had said, you will not sleep and had laid hands on me. And sleep didn't come near my eye. I drove all the way to Enugu, drove straight into Opera Square and took him straight into administration. Those things are not natural. But because I accepted it as being from God, God supplied the power to back it. It was not Pastor Emma, it was the power of God. And the fact that I had received this as an instruction from the covering over me. Praise the living God. So the concept of a covering is so strong in the Bible. If you ignore it, it can mess up one's destiny. If you come into disobedience, if you come into partial obedience, you'll be in trouble. Do you remember that Adam and Eve, the moment they disobeyed God for the first time, what happened? At the serpent's beguiling, what did they know thereafter? They knew that they were naked. Before that, were, not, were they not naked? Hello? Before that, were they not naked? 
Was there any dress they were wearing? Why did they suddenly realize after their first disobedience that they were naked? I'll tell you why. While they were in obedience, the glory, the presence, and the power of God covered them. So they didn't know their nakedness. The moment they went into disobedience and brought themselves out from under cover, they recognized their own personal nakedness. Now they had to look for how to cover themselves. They began to sow thick leaves, to use leaves to cover themselves where Jehovah's glory had covered them. What are you using to cover yourself now? Is that why you're struggling? Is that why some of the things happening around you are happening? Is, is somebody hearing what I'm Had you exchanged fig leaves for the covering of God's glory? Because you choose, I will only obey up to this extent. The rest of the way, I'll do what I like. And God says, fine. It's your choice. But the consequence of this is my glory I will not share with anybody. I will not be with you in trouble. I will not be with you in danger. You can no longer walk over serpents and scorpions and nothing will by any means hurt you. I will no longer condemn to lift you up on high. What you see, you see. Because from now on, you have chosen to cover yourself. And it's a small disobedience. You disobeyed your departmental head. You don't recall. This morning, one of the members of the church came to me and said, D uh, Daddy, please, I am sorry. I um, didn't come to church in time and um, uh, I came to apologize to you. I said, did I talk to you about anything about this? He said, no, but last week Pastor Chukudi, then talked, Pastor Chukudi talked about it. I said, oh, if Pastor Chukudi talked about it, then I cannot forgive you. Pastor Chukudi is under me, yes, but I won't forgive you. I won't override his authority. What he said, he said under delegated authority and it's scriptural. So go and call Pastor Chukudi. And he called Pastor Chukudi and said, please, I'm appealing on his behalf. He's saying it will not happen again. So this week, please, can you let it ride? But I'm not forcing you, you and him, go. if you forgive him, you've forgiven him. If you don't forgive him, it's not my business. I handed him over to Pastor Chukwode. Am I talking to somebody here? There are people who disobey a departmental head because I don't like his face. That's why I don't want to follow his instruction. That departmental head was placed there by me. And I was placed there by God. You're not disobeying a departmental head. I'm sorry to tell you. You're disobeying God himself. Delegated authority. And you know what you've done? You've stepped out from covering. You've done what? Hello, somebody. You've done what? Every time the Israelites stepped out of covering, the Amalekites took them. God was a covering of a cloud by day and fire by night. When the cloud began to move, Israel broke camp and did what? And did what? When they refused to move, what happened? Those who refused to move were left behind. And who took them? The Amalekites killed them instantly. And when you're in disobedience, you move out from under the covering. And so the enemy can take you. If the little fish had gone again, without the covering of that shadow above him, the shark would have eaten him. Am I talking to somebody here? So are you, ask your neighbor, look at your neighbor, say, are you undercover? Are you really sure you are undercover? Ask your neighbor, whose covering are you under? I visit that church, visit that church, visit the other church. You're under nobody's covering. You can't take one third covering from here, one quarter covering from here. No, you are not under, you're not submitted to authority. And I'll tell you this. If you are under the leadership of a man, and on this side of heaven, you will be under the leadership of men. Men are men. They will be flawed. They will be failed. There will be things they will say you don't like. There will be behaviors, there will be behaviors they put up you don't like. If you treat them just the way you see them, you are in trouble. In Ephesians 5, the Bible said to the wife, Submit to your own husband as unto the Lord. Your submission is to a man, but it is God that is watching. If you fail to submit to that man, God said, It is me, you, 
Me, me, you refuse to, to submit to. David committed adultery with Bathsheba and had Uriah killed. When the prophet Nathan confronted him, what did he say to him? Thus says the Lord. How could you do a thing like this and disgrace and disdain and disobey me? Was it not him and Bathsheba? Hello? Was it not him and Uriah? But God said, I am the one that set this law and you broke it. So it is me you insulted. And Jehovah said, the consequence of this is that the hedge is broken. The sword will not depart from your family ever again. People will be dying unnecessarily. Listen, when Absalom died, did he know it was what his father did that killed him? When ten wives of David were raped by Absalom, did they know it was what his father did? their father did that killed them. When Tamar was raped, did she know why she was raped? When Amnon was murdered by Absalom, did, 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 um, did uh, Amnon know why he was murdered? Did anybody tell him, we're going to kill you today because your father committed adultery? When the little boy that Bathsheba gave birth to became sick and died, was there any broadcast? David, it is you that caused this boy that to die. This is the thing about being undercover. You will never hear broadcast. You will never hear news. This is why what is happening is happening. But when the hedge is broken, the serpent will bite. And God says, I will deliver you provided you're undercover. There are so many. I'm not saying that every time something happens to somebody, it is because the hedge is broken. Could be trials, testing, training, etc. But very many times, especially persistent problems we're going through are because of what? A broken hedge in our lives. That in an area of our lives where we say to God, please, this area, don't touch this area. I won't surrender. I won't submit. I am not undercover here. Every other thing I'll do. And so the enemy says, fine. That's where I'll come in from. And he comes in subtly. He comes in and he can wait 10 years before he strikes. You have even forgotten your disobedience. Am I talking to somebody here today? Praise the living God. So I ask the question again. Are you under cover? Soon as Adam and Eve came out from under Jehovah, the next thing they needed was to cover themselves. You don't like authority. You don't like submission. Most people don't. I'm not even sure that I do. Because sometimes it can appear troublesome. But guess what? It is like vaccination shots. Is there anybody here that likes being vaccinated? For measles? For polio? But if you see when somebody is walking like this because his mommy didn't give him vaccination and he's now 21 with one leg short and thin because mama didn't give him polio don't you think it would have been wiser for him to take vaccination at an earlier age? Submission under authorities like vaccination. When you are vaccinated, Jehovah says, I will be with you even in trouble. When the enemy comes in like a flood, I'll be there. Don't worry. No matter what happens to others, your case will be totally different because you are under cover. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the living God. That's why God says to you and I, come unto me. Matthew eleven twenty eight. All ye that labor and are heavy laden. You're laboring, you have a load. I will give you rest. What is my rest? Take my yoke. Take my own covering upon you. It might look like discipline. It might look difficult. It might look like, what is all this noise about coming early? Why, when Okada is not running? Then wake up earlier. And know you have a longer journey and more, to, more stress to put yourself through. Am I talking to somebody here? It's a yoke. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am meek and lonely heart and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Ye shall find after you have taken the yoke, not before. The discipline of God walketh righteousness. 
And when righteousness is complete, is complete, the Bible says it will have its full reward. Praise the Lord. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. It looks like it's difficult today. But if you choose to submit yourself to it, in years to come, you will look back and say, Ah, it was a good thing that I did this. Which is why Isaiah 1 states in verse 19, Isaiah 1, 19, If you be willing and obedient... Number one is what? Willing. Number two, one is an attitude. The other one is an action. There are people who in action are obedient, but they murmur and complain and frown their face before they obey. They are not willing. One does not go without the other. If you be willing first and obedient, you receive the instruction divinely given by God's set up structure you received it from your father from your mother from your husband from your mother from your departmental head willingly you receive then you shall eat the good of the land if you do not but if you refuse and what? rebel that word again rebel ye shall be devoured with the sword this is not, you shall be flogged. This is not, it shall be difficult for you. You shall be devoured with the sword. And it is a word on oath. Hello? For the mouth of the Lord had spoken it. The same mouth that said, let there be light. Is saying it. We need to understand these things and not trivialize our Christianity. I tell you this. Your Christianity has to come to a place where you are submitted to authority, inconvenienced by authority, and yet serving God joyously. I tell you, you your Christianity has not matured until you go out of your way to serve. Even though sometimes it's being convenient, but you're serving us unto the Lord. Sometimes a person who is giving you instructions might not even get the instructions right. But if you submit us unto the Lord, provided those instructions are not contrary to God's word, you obey. And if you do have the opportunity, one on one, to talk to the person, would you respect? You call the person and say, please, these things that I'm hearing and seeing, they're not quite what I think they should be. Please, can you explain to me? Or, you say, can't we do it better this way? You will be listened to. Hello? By the grace of God. If you're not listened to, a stage might come where God himself tells you, your assignment here is over. Without a quarrel, properly, decently, and in order, relocate. You have learned what I want you to learn from this place. Praise the Lord. I will continue with this teaching next week. But talking about the umbrella. There are at least seven kinds of umbrellas. In the picture of being living under the umbrella of God. Under the covering of God. And the thing about an umbrella is. You can have an umbrella. If you don't know where it is. They that rain falls, rain will beat you. If you have an umbrella and you poke holes in it by yourself in dry season, rainy season, you open it, then you know why it is called umbrella. Because that day, rain will do what? Beat you. Any carelessness with an umbrella will bring problems one day. But carefulness with an umbrella, on the day it is needed, you spread it and it gives you shelter and it gives you covering. You are under covering. And you find that the structure of heaven in its entirety is like umbrellas. God himself, number one, is an umbrella. Next week I'll give you pictures of God as your umbrella, acting as an umbrella over your life, your family, your destiny. God's word is an umbrella. The government of a nation set in authority over the nation is an umbrella. Number four, the church has been set by God as an, umbre as an umbrella over his people. Number five, church leadership. Pastors, elders, and so on. 
are an umbrella over the members of the church. Number six, the husband has been established by God's word as an umbrella over his wife and over his family. And number seven, seven is the number of perfection. Parents are umbrellas of protection and blessings over their children. Any one of these umbrellas that anybody toys with, Will be a recipe for destruction of, desti of destiny. Whereas any one of these umbrellas that you treasure, look after, and service will speak for you continually. Blessings far exceeding anything you could have thought to ask or to imagine. So once again, I ask you turn to your neighbor and ask your neighbor, neighbor, are you undercover? Are you duly and properly submitted under cover? Praise the living God. There are children, before mommy talks one, you talk one dozen. You're not under cover. I'll end with one thing. One um, short psalm. Psalms 133. Can we take a look at Psalms 133, please? Verse 1. Behold... Behold, you will see it. It will be visible. It will be good. Please, verse 1. It will be good and what? Verse 1. It will be good and what? Pleasant. For brethren to dwell together in what? Unity. Under protection, under that umbrella, under that covering, in agreement. You see, willingly, that's part of that unity. Self-submission. That's part of that unity. Verse 2. Verse 2. Can I ask you something? What is the precious ointment we're talking about here? Another word for that, uh, 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 that, that phrase. Precious ointment. The anointing. If you don't have it, you don't have it. It is the anointing that destroys the yokes. Take this out. It won't come. Water never flows backwards. If you are not subject to spiritual authority, you can never draw what God has put there for you. Am I talking to somebody here? I'll give you more scriptures for this next week. Then verse 3. Says what? It is as the dew of Hammon and as the dew that descended. This is not blessing. Please bless me. That blessing is begged for. But you want commanded blessing. Automatic blessing. The blessing that comes direct from God even without your knowing or asking for it. Hello somebody. Put yourself under cover. Put yourself what? Under. It will flow natural. And it comes as the dew. The thing about the dew of Haman. If you study anything about Hammon, you will find out that in Mount Hammon, the dew is so heavy that there's no kind of crop that doesn't do well there. Every crop thrives on Mount Hammon because there's just enough moisture. It will not wash away the soil. It will not wash away soil nutrients. You can grow all kinds of fruits in and out of season on Mount Hammon. Why? Because of the dew. It hardly ever rains. It's only heavy dew every single morning. That's where the principle of drip irrigation, that's where the principle of drip irrigation started from. Hear me, child of God. I want to say this to every one of us. It is a clear choice. If you decide to be undercover with God, the result is commanded blessings. The ones that you didn't know to ask for will just keep surprising you. And the Lord says it will flow from the head to the beard. Amen? Can we have verse 4? Is there any verse 4? Okay. It is like the ointment that flowed from the beard to the hem of Aaron's garment. Verse 2. Praise the Lord. 
What do you have, please, verse 2? What do you have in, I mean, on Aaron's garments? Does anybody know? You have bells, golden bells, and pomegranates. And the pomegranates are in three colors, blue, purple, and one other color. Pomegranates are symbols of fruitfulness. Very fragrant fruits. Very valuable. And now here they come in various colors. Each one of those colors is significant. Every golden bell represents a miracle from God. Or the gift of God in manifestation. Every pomegranate is a fruit of the spirit. Or a blessing from God of a diverse kind. It flows from the head to the beard. To what? the hem of the garment and at the lowest level which means throughout the body of Christ there will be blessing throughout your family there will be blessing throughout your business there will be blessing why? because you're undercover because you're what? I pray that somebody will get this teaching because it has the capacity to change your entire life and your life's testimony whether it be because for you, for, from the teaching you learned that you had not been undercover in your marriage. You had not been undercover in the ministry. You had not been undercover in your family. You are one of those that when they say Buhari, and most of us are guilty of this, we open our mouths and abuse. God says, anybody in authority I put in there, including Buhari. Hello? Now some of you are looking at me bad eye. Including what? And I'll tell you why. If we had not messed up and failed. Every people get the leadership they deserve. If we had started praying in time. If we had not made our choice and said our choice is change. Did you ask God? Did God tell you that it was changing anything? Am I talking to anybody here? But it is you and I that said, change it, change it, change it. And now we have the change we wanted. And you're saying it is God? It is God gave you what you deserved. Because you took his will out of it and forced his hand. Am I talking to somebody here? Which is also the reason why I have always told you. With Peter B, I love him. He has inspired this country. Hello? But God has not told me Peter B is my man. And I will never tell you what I didn't hear from God. So when I tell you to pray for Peter B, I say, please, God, protect him. Whatever happens, he has really done something for the country. Let him live. If he's not your man who you want to be president, put your man under whose leadership it will please you to bless Nigeria, whoever the man is. But let Peter B also live to go back to his business and live his life happily. Am I talking to somebody here? Praise the living God. That's the limit of my prayer for Peter B. True or false? Have I ever said, Lord, make Peter B the president? Because the only president I want for Nigeria is a president God has appointed for. This time, let it be God's choice. Let us pray God's choice into manifestation because we are under cover and because we want to remain under his covering. Praise the living God. Has anybody learned anything today? Please, this teaching is a teaching that should make everybody go home and take a look at his own life and the things he's doing in his life. Are you under cover? Praise the Lord. Shall we rise on our feet?